When is a triple-double just not good enough? Stick around to find out. I'm in my zone. Yeah. I'm in my zone. Uh, yeah. Breaking them as they come. Uh, as they come. Who crowned at number one? Welcome, brothers and sisters, to In The Zone with Chris Broussard, where we are going to chop it up and break it down for the next 20 minutes or so about what's going on in the NBA the way I see it. And boy, do we have a hot topic today. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. As we all know, Russell Westbrook is flirting with history by threatening to become the only player not named Oscar Robertson to ever average a triple-double for an entire season. So, of course, Westbrook has to be the leader in the MVP race, right? Wrong. It says here that the MVP right now is the guy with the most distinctive beard in the league and a wardrobe that's not nearly as crazy as Westbrook's. Actually, they, they both do dress kind of strange. Fresh dress like a million bucks. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. This is about ball, not gear. And when it comes to hoop, no one, not Westbrook, not LeBron, not KD, not Steph, is playing at a higher level than James Harden, who at 28 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds, is himself only two boards away from averaging a triple-double. So despite Westbrook's historical chase, if I had to cast my MVP vote today, I'd cast it for Harden. Here's why. Number one. Harden has the Houston Rockets on pace to win 63 games. After losing Dwight Howard, after bringing in Mike D'Antoni, who, while a very good coach, has failed miserably in his last two stops. After the league's general managers all predicted the Rockets would finish eighth in the West in their annual preseason survey, the Rockets are, quite frankly, defying logic. I cannot preach. They've beaten Golden State. They've beaten San Antonio. They're a league best 20 and 2 since the start of December. And it's all because of James Harden, who is doing this without a teammate who's ever been, or in my opinion, ever will be, an all star. Every other team that's on pace to win 60 is chock full of stars. San Antonio has two, Cleveland has three, Golden State has four. Folks, this has never been done. Never in the 70-year history of the NBA has a player led his team to 60 or more wins without having a teammate who at some point in his career has been an all-star. Never. Damn! Westbrook, of course, doesn't have an all-star teammate either, but he's only got the Thunder on pace to win 48 games. That's a 15-game difference with comparable talent. That alone is reason enough to have Harden out front in the MVP race. But there's more. Number two. Harden has been much more efficient than Westbrook. Harden's shooting better from the field, better from the three-point line. He's taking nearly five fewer shots per game than Westbrook. In fact, check this out. Harden currently is one of only five players in history to average 28 points or more while taking fewer than 19 shots a game. Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, Kevin Durant, and Adrian Dantley are the other four. That's pretty good company. The top five that are alive is still the same. Look, efficiency matters. It allows Harden's other teammates to get plenty of touches, to feel involved in the offense, to get in and stay in a rhythm. That's wildly important for rocket shooters like Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson, and Trevor Ariza. One assistant coach told me the other day that he can see how much Harden's teammates enjoy playing with him, and that's all because he's given up the rock. Just to drive this efficiency point home even more, Harden's true shooting percentage, which takes into account free throws and three-pointers, is eighth best among point guards in the league. Westbrook's 33rd among point guards. And let me remind you, there's only 30 teams in the league. Enough said on the efficiency tip. Number three. Harden is having an astronomical season while playing a new position. In case you didn't know, James Harden has never played point guard before in his life. Not in high school, not in college, not even in his dreams. Huh? I mean, I'm not sure about that one, but I'm willing to make that bet. 
Look, he's been a playmaker all his life. I know that, all right? In high school, college, he bring the ball up, even when he was coming off the bench in Oklahoma City. And obviously, since joining the Rockets, he's handled the ball a lot. But he's never officially been a straight-up point guard 24-7, 365. We've seen plenty of point forwards or shooting guards that handle the ball, generate the offense. LeBron James, Scottie Pippen, now Giannis Antetokounmpo. But none of them has made the switch full time. That brings a whole nother level of responsibility and possible scrutiny when you declare, I am now a point guard. Harden wasn't afraid to do that. And not only that, not only has he made the switch to the toughest, most competitive, most critical position in today's NBA, but one former perennial all-star told me yesterday, this is the greatest point guard era in history. And Harden is playing the position better than any of them. That's a direct quote from a perennial all-star who played back in the day. He said he's playing better than Steph, better than Russ, better than CP3, Lillard, Kyrie, Isaiah Thomas, John Wall, all of them. Harden is doing it better. Think about that. Then think about this. Uh. Look, he only averaged three assists in high school. Three assists in college. Now he's averaging 11.8. Again, only five players have ever averaged more assists in a season than James Harden is doing now. And their names will boggle the mind. Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, the original one, and John Stockton. Legends, all of them, plus Kevin Johnson and Kevin Porter. Notice that I didn't say Steve Nash. Playing in the same system, playing with a team full of all-stars, even the great Steve Nash never averaged as many assists per game as Harden, who's doing it in his first ever season at the position. Did you hear that? Some of y'all want to harp on his 5.8 turnovers per game. Yeah, I know that's a huge number. He's going to shatter the league record he set last year, 4.7 turnovers. But have you ever thought that his being at a new position for the first time in life at the highest level of basketball just might have something to do with his high number of mistakes? Especially in D'Antoni's system where you got to attack. You have to be aggressive. You have to keep your dribble in traffic. Read the defense all at the same time. Besides, though, he's dropping so many dimes that his assist to turnover ratio is still a solid two. And yes, higher than Westbrook. Oh, and speaking about Westbrook and this whole triple-double craze, Harden just recently recorded the granddaddy of all triple-doubles with 53 points, 17 assists, 16 rebounds, and a win over the New York Knicks. That's the first NBA game in history. Again, this dude keeps making history. Where a player has recorded at least 50 points, 15 assists, and 15 rebounds. Think about that. It's simple mathematics. Check it out. Even in the days when Wilt Chamberlain and Oscar Robertson were putting up these ungodly numbers, neither of them did what Harden just did. Number four. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There's an elephant in the room, and I know all of you want to get to it. But Chris, Chris, slow your roll. You know Harden doesn't play any defense. You can't be the MVP with that turnstile matador charming soft defense. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. Look, stop watching all the YouTube vines from last year and the years before. Harden is actually putting forth more effort if you just watch the games than he did last season on defense. I ain't saying he's morphed into Sidney Moncrief, but Harden has been serviceable defensively. His presence in the Rockets lineup has not stopped them from ranking what is a respectable 16th in the league in defensive efficiency. And we know it's without a coach who even emphasizes the word defense, Mike D'Antoni. So as a matter of fact, Opponents are only shooting 44% from the floor while being guarded by Harden. That's light years ahead of the 51% they're shooting against Westbrook this season. Man, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to diss Russ. He's having a phenomenal season. Absolutely, positively phenomenal. I'm just trying to open y'all eyes to the magic that Harden is creating. 
You're blind, baby. You're blind from the facts. And lockdown defense has never been a requirement for winning the MVP award. Steve Nash, far from a lockdown defender. Steph Curry, Charles Barkley, they all won the award despite being less than stellar on that end of the floor. So there you have it. The case for James Harden, don't even try to dispute it because it is air tight. Now, of course, there's still plenty of basketball left to be played. And if the Rockets drop and fall closer to Oklahoma City's pace, then look, it's going to be hard to deny Westbrook averaging a triple-double for the MVP. But as of today, the hardware goes to Harden. And if you don't know, now you know. Before we move on, I want to tell you about the Garbage Time podcast with Katie Nolan presented by Fox Sports. It's a weekly podcast hosted by the one and only Katie Nolan. Katie tackles the world of sports and so much more. And you know she's got jokes too. On previous episodes, she's had guests like Bill Simmons, Victor Cruz, and Jeff Gordon. So make sure you check out the Garbage Time podcast with Katie Nolan. All right, next we're going to play a game I like to call Would You Rather. And for that, I'm going to bring in my producer, John Hill. I like to refer to him as DJ Johnny John because he's the one behind all those fresh drops. You can go with this or you can go with that. You can go with this or you can go with that. Would you rather? What do you have for me today? Today I want to talk about Derrick Rose going AWOL from the Knicks. This never happened to me before. And I explained to the, uh, I explained that to the team and the front office. I want to know if you were the Knicks, would you re-sign Derrick Rose this offseason, or would you look elsewhere? All right, so there's several point guards going to be free agents on the market. Steph Curry, we won't even include him, but ones that might leave: Chris Paul, Drew Holiday, Kyle Lowry. The best in that bunch, obviously, is Chris Paul. So if I could get Chris Paul. Who, look, I'm not saying he's definitely leaving the Clippers, but I think there's a chance. He's boys with Carmelo Anthony. He loves New York City, and let's face it, it hasn't worked with Blake Griffin. And it's not going to work as long as the Warriors are in the West. So why not go East where you really only have the Cavaliers to try to overcome? So I could see Chris at least seriously considering the Knicks if they get their act together. I mean, he's not joining a burning house. So over these next few months, they have to show some professionalism and get their act together and show that they could be a good team. But with that said, I think it could be a good chance for them to get him. So if I can get CP3, bye-bye, Derek. Got it, got it. All right, next question. This one's a tough one. All right, if you were Steve Kerr, coach of the Warriors, the game is on the line, one play to go, would you rather have Steph Curry take the final shot or Kevin Durant. Wow. I, I told love, you this one was tough. I, that is, I love both players. Look, it's a decision he has to make, you know, almost every night. Yeah. But um, I love both players. Um, great problem to have, obviously. And surprisingly, I looked up some of their numbers, and neither guy has been that good in the clutch. You know, everybody rips LeBron and kills him, but his numbers in the clutch are killing both of their numbers. Look at this. On potential game-winning or go-ahead field goals in the last 10 seconds of the fourth quarter or overtime, Steph's only shooting 33%. Durant, 24%. So, can I give the ball to Clay? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but seriously, um, I'm going to go with Steph okay. because I just feel like he's a little bit more cold-blooded yeah. than KD. So, I, I would go with Steph. All right. I think I agree with you on that one. All right, next question. This year's number one pick, Ben Simmons, has started practicing with the Sixers this week. Now, if you were the Sixers, would you want to get Ben Simmons playing this year, or would you rest him for the whole year? That is a tough one. Um, I spoke to one of his handlers just a few days ago, and they said they're keeping all their options open. You know, obviously the first thing is you want to get him not 100%, 110% healthy. Yeah. So make sure there's nothing wrong at all with the injury, that he's fully back to great health. Um, and then after that, they said they have to get him in game shape because you don't want him overcompensating for, you know, his fatigue and then getting injured again. So with three months left in the season, there should be plenty of time to get him in game shape and make sure he's fully healthy. And if that's the case, look, as long as the doctors are giving him a clean bill of health, I would say put him out there. I mean, unless it's the last 
10 games. But if there's a significant part of the season left, I would put him out here. You can't be afraid of injury. Mm. I mean, if he goes out there and plays and gets hurt again, I mean, you, you almost have to say he, he may have gotten hurt if he had started next season. You know, you just have to play. You can't be worried about that sort of thing. And if I'm the Sixers, I want to get him and Joel Embiid developing chemistry as soon as I can. I don't want to start off next season and have to be the first 10, 12, 20 games getting those two guys used to each other. I want to do that this season if possible so I can take off running at the beginning of the next season. So I would say play him as long as he's healthy. Okay. All right. So let's let's keep going on this Joel Embiid topic since you mentioned him. Last question. Rumor has it that if he makes the All-Star game, he'll be able to get a date with Rihanna. So my question to you, Chris, is would you rather be an all-star or have a date with Rihanna? <laughs> Look, I'm a happily married man. I, I didn't mean to get you So, in trouble, so you know, I have to, to let me see if I can go back. Let me see if I can go back into you, my you know. single mentality. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, I'm there. I'm, I'm single all right, all right, 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 right now. All right. Um, I would... Rihanna's bad. Ain't no doubt. Da- <laughs> look, Rihanna's bad, man. All right, but I would say I would rather be an all star because if I'm an all star, I I can have my choice of Rihanna lookalikes. All right, I've yeah. been around the league long enough to know <laughs> that. All right, so nothing against Riri. Okay, but I would rather be an all star. But this hypothetical, I'm, this I'm married, I'm happily yeah, yeah, yeah. married, no, and I definitely ain't that. no NBA all star. I didn't mean All-Star. to get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I think she'll be cool with it, my wife. <laughs> Broussard's bet. They throw it into Durant. Durant stumbles, falls down, throws it up. It's over. Cleveland wins. The big game coming up next week is Cavs versus Warriors. Who you got, Chris? I think the Warriors will even the score, and I think they'll win this game. Uh, this is a huge game for them. There are only a few litmus taste games for them during the season, so... This is one of them. I think they'll win. Okay. So I want to place a little prop bet with you. Steph Curry hasn't played as well as he normally does these last four games against the Cavs. So last game, he only had 15 points, which is 10 less than his average. So the over-under question is, will Steph hit his average of 25 points? Mm, That is a tough one. You're right. He's only averaged like 21 points against them in these last four games. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say, yes, he will get 25 plus. I think he's going to have a big game. I think he'll have a chip on his shoulder. Um, and I think he, he wants to put those Cleveland demons to rest. So I think he will come out, have a big night, and get over 25 points. All right, that's today's show. Let's wrap it up and run it back. When is a triple-double just not good enough? If I had to cast my MVP vote today, I'd cast it for hard. Not Westbrook, not LeBron, not KD, not Steph is playing at a higher level than James Harden. In case you didn't know, James Harden has never played point guard before in his life. Harden has been much more efficient than Westbrook. But as of today, the hardware goes to Harden. Game blouses. That's it for today's show. If you like what you heard, subscribe to In The Zone with Chris Broussard on iTunes or SoundCloud. And please do us a favor and give us five stars. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace. I'm in my zone.